Hi, today we are going to be looking at how to graph angles. You can generate any angle by fixing one ray, and we're going to call that ray the initial side, and rotating the other ray called the terminal side, so where we start and where we end. And we're going to rotate that around the vertex. So when we look at our grid over here, we're going to start at 0 degrees and go to 90 degrees. We know around our circle how many degrees there are. 270, 360. So when we go to rotate, we have the initial side. The initial side is always going to be at 0. And you're going to rotate that around the vertex. I'm just making up an angle here. Where that ray stops is going to be called the terminal side. So the distance from where you started to where you ended, that is going to be your angle measure. So let's go ahead and practice. We're going to start with 200 degrees. So we know our angles, we're starting at zero, we've got 90, 180, 270, and all the way around is 360 degrees. So if I want to go to 200, we're starting here. If I were to go up here, we'd go to 90, 180, I want 200 degrees. So I'm going to go 20 degrees past 180. When you're trying to guess where that's going to be, think about how much distance in that quadrant. From 180 to 270 is 90, so halfway would be 45 degrees. So I'm going to go about half so of half, so about a quarter of the way. And I'm going to end right here. When you draw this, you want to show that rotation. So we're going to start at zero, and you want to draw that arrow. It is important that you show the fact that you started at zero and that you rotate it around. I need to see which way that arrow is going. The direction that the arrow is going is really important because when you look at the next example, we have a negative 100 degrees. So when you have a positive angle measure, so if the angle measure is positive, you're going to be doing your rotation counterclockwise. If the angle measure is negative, like in our second degree, then the rotation is going to be clockwise. So if I have a negative 100, instead of rotating to the left counterclockwise, we're going to be rotating to the right clockwise, which means if I'm going here, I'm going this direction first. So this is a negative 90, a negative 180, a negative 270, and a negative 360. So if I want to go 100 degrees, I'm going to go just 10 degrees past that negative 90. We're always starting at zero, so it's just a matter of which direction you go. So we're going to be rotating or clockwise for that negative angle measure. So the rotation of your arrow showing me that you started at zero and which way you rotate is a part of the graph. So our last one is 600. It's positive, so we're going to go counterclockwise. We know we start at 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. Now, when I go all the way around my circle, I haven't hit 600 degrees yet, so I want to keep going. We know each quadrant is 90, so if I add 90 to 360, now we're at 450. If I add another 90, now I'm at 540. If I add another 90, now I'm at 630. So I only want to go to 600, so I know that I'm going to end up over here. 600 is 60 degrees past 540, or you can think about the fact that it's 30 degrees shy of 630. So I know I'm going to end right about here. Now again, we want to show our rotation, so we start at 0, but I'm not going to do this. That's not true. It's a 600 degree angle. That's not the rotation I did. I did start at zero, but I had to go all the way around the circle and then come back. So you need to show how many times you're spinning around the circle when you're graphing your angles in standard form. 
So that's going to bring us to the fact that these are coterminal angles. Two angles are coterminal if their terminal sides coincide. So an angle to coterminal with a given angle can be found by adding or subtracting multiples of 360 degrees. I've given you an angle here to begin with. So this is a 205 degree angle. You start at zero and we've spun around to 205 degrees. We know this is 90, 180, 270, 360. So we want a coterminal. Coterminal means that it's ending at the exact same point, just with another rotation around the circle. So if I were to start here at zero, like we always start, and I go, I'm gonna pass that terminal side and I'm gonna come all the way around again. So I started at 205, but I went around the circle again, and we know the distance in the circle is 360, so I added that 360, and I got 565 degrees. Now there's infinite possibilities because I can continue going around the circle, around the circle as many times as I wanted to. Now we also have a negative coterminal. So the negative coterminal is going the opposite direction. So if I'm starting at zero, we know our negative angles are going this direction. We've got that negative 90, a negative 180. So we wanna figure out where that is. So just like before when we added 360 to find the positive, if I wanna find the negative, I'm gonna be subtracting 360 because I'm gonna go in the other direction. 205 minus 360 is a negative 155. So from here to here, that's a negative 155 degrees. So if you think about if I started at this terminal side right here, the reason why we subtracted is I'm subtracting this whole distance around the circle and it puts us back at that 205. So coterminals are just multiples of 360. You're adding 360, you're subtracting 360. So let's go ahead and flip over to the back side. List one positive and one negative coterminal angle. So we're starting with three, 400 degrees. So we've got 90, 180, 270, 360, 400, we've got to go a little bit more. So we add another 90, that's our quadrant. So now we're at 450. We see that 400 degrees is 40 degrees past 360. So when I draw in standard form, we go all the way around and we come back here. So if I want a positive coterminal angle, I take the 400, I add 360. And one possible coterminal, starting at zero, going all the way around, passing it again, coming back, that's gonna put us at that 760. Now if I'm going to try to find a negative coterminal angle, I'm gonna subtract. So 400 minus 360, well that puts me at 40 degrees. This is another positive coterminal angle because from here to here is 40 degrees. So I'm still in need of that negative coterminal angle, which means we need to subtract 360 again. So you can either start where you finished off, so 40 minus that another 360, which puts you at that negative 320, or you could have done 400 minus 360 twice. Whichever way you wanna look at it, because again, we subtracted 360 once here, which put us at 40, and then we subtracted 360. We subtracted 360 twice. So you can start where you left off, or you can just start where you began, and then subtract 360 twice. Either way, your negative coterminal is gonna be a negative 320 degrees. So starting at zero, we're just going the other direction around your circle. You're going clockwise, and we're still going to be starting at zero. Whenever you draw your angles, you always begin at zero. All right, so now we have a negative 310, our negative angle measure, so now we're going clockwise. I like to label the axes so I have an idea of where I'm going. So if I want a negative 310, 
I'm going to be going 40 degrees past 270, or you think about it, I'm going 50 degrees before. So I'm going to be stopping around here because it's a negative coterminal. We're starting here, going clockwise, ending there. So if I want a positive coterminal, we have a negative 310 plus 360, which puts us at a positive 50. And you can see that starting again at zero, going in the counterclockwise direction. Here's our 50 degrees. And our negative coterminal, negative 310 minus 360, is going to put us at a negative 670. So because we already have that negative angle, when we start here, we start at zero. We're going all the way around a second time. So you can see that coterminals are all about having that same ending point. All of these angles are ending at this ray right here. It's just a matter of one, which direction did you go, clockwise or counterclockwise, and how many times around the circle did you go to get to that spot. All right, so next we're gonna think about the circle itself. Maybe you remember from geometry but the circumference of a circle is two times pi times r. We're going to be thinking in terms of the unit circle, which we're gonna get into more later, and that is when the radius is going to be one. So we're gonna think about the fact that in a circle there's 360 degrees, the circumference is the distance around the circle, which means when we talk about radians, the distance around the circle is going to be two pi. So 360 degrees is the same as two pi because we're thinking about the radius of one. We're gonna use this idea to help us convert between degrees and radians. And I know radians is a new word to you. You may have heard about it last year in geometry. Don't worry about what a radian is. We're gonna concentrate more on that tomorrow but what we're going to concentrate is how to convert between degrees and radians. If I'm going from degrees to radians, I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. And if I want to convert from radians to degrees, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so by 180 over pi. And it's actually pretty easy to remember when you use each of them. So if I want to convert 140 degrees to radians, I know that I'm in degrees because I have the degree indicator. If I have my answers in radians, there should be a pi in the answer. So if I want there to be a pi in the answer, I'm multiplying by pi over 180. Remember, if you're multiplying one that is a fraction and one that's not, you can just throw that over one. You multiply across. You're not going to put pi in your calculator. You're going to keep that. So really, you're in your calculator, you're doing 140 divided by 180, which is going to reduce down to 7 pi over 9. I know if my answer is in radians because there's a pi in my answer. So radians have pi and degrees don't. So now if I want to convert from pi over 8 to degrees, and again, I know that this is in radians because there's a pi in the answer, Degrees doesn't have pi, so what I want to do is I want to cancel those pi's out, which is why I'm going to use the converting factor of 180 over pi. I'm going to get rid of that pi, which means I need one on top, one on the bottom. That's how I know I'm going to choose the 180 over pi converter. So then in your calculator, you're just going to divide 180 divided by 8, and you end up with 22.5 degrees. Again, tomorrow we're going to concentrate more on radians. Today was the focus on graphing angles in degrees. All right, and you are all done.